All right, guys, today I'm giving you your options when that appraisal falls short. Ooh. Happy Friday, guys. It's exciting to see. I appreciate you joining me, whether you're on Facebook or on YouTube. Either way, if you've got questions, comments, put them in the comments and I will respond before the end of the video. If it's after the video, I'll get back to you as well in the comments section. Guys, I want to talk today about an issue that we have when you are under contract. You're thinking everything is looking good and all of a sudden ugh, you get that horrible phone call from the appraiser, man. It's not a very welcomed phone call, but it is something we've got to deal with. So I want to talk about the timeline and how it pops up just for those of you who maybe have not dealt with this issue before, which is probably most of you. Uh, and then we'll talk about your four different options, right? So when you get, uh, well, let, let, let's reverse it uh, even a little bit more here. You're a buyer. You're going to go out, you're going to start looking at some properties. You're going to be pre-approved with a lender. You've got everything all figured out. You find the property you love. You put the offer in. The offer gets accepted. Maybe there's some negotiation back and forth, but eventually it gets accepted. Maybe you've got an inspection period. So you go through the inspection and, you know, either you're happy with everything or you negotiate some things. But either way, you get through the inspection period. And now it's pretty much just the lender working on everything behind the scenes with the underwriter to get everything done in time for closing, right? They're working with the title company and the title company is doing a lot of work. But at that point, you're pretty much just chilling, waiting for things to, to come to fruition at the end of the game, right? Now, one of the big challenges, in fact, I would say maybe the biggest challenge we've got left <clears throat> is the appraisal. Now, what's the purpose of the appraisal? The purpose of the appraisal is I'm a realtor. I'm a salesman. I make 100% commission. I want to sell a home. The bank knows that. So they're not going to take my value and say, hey, it's good. We'll, we'll give this person a loan based on that. The other realtors, the same thing. They're making 100% commission as well. The buyer wants the house. They might pay too much for it. You never know, right? They might be so excited about the home that they're willing to pay too much for it. I have, let's see, is this true? No, I negotiated quite a bit on uh, my previous home. On this home, I came in 25 grand high. I wanted it. It was a hot market. There was no number two. This was number one. And whatever number two was, it was distant. I came in 25 grand high and I got it, right? So the question is, is the buyer a little too aggressive? Now the lender too, the person that you're interacting with as a buyer, they are also on commission. They're a salesperson. They want to sell the property. They want to get it closed. So somebody has to come in, somebody who doesn't care if it closes or not to protect the bank and really to protect the buyer and make sure that they're not overpaying for a property, right? They want to make sure that the bank is going to loan out money that is lessening their risk over time. A certain percentage of people are going to go into default. If I, as the bank, get that property back, I want to know that I'm getting something back that's worth what I lent out or more, right? That's what they're hoping for. So it's basically an insurance policy, the appraisal is, for the lender, right? But it's also great insight for a buyer. Now, there's nothing wrong with overpaying for a home if you love the home. I loved my home. I overpaid for it. And my appraisal came in a little short. It came in five grand short. Now, five grand isn't a big deal. I was able to pony up the cash difference and I got the funding on five grand less. No big deal. But sometimes appraisals fall short 20 grand, 30 grand, 100 grand. Now, I've been here for three years in Florida, right? I can't believe it's been three years already. And in three years, we've had 160 sales and I've had 13 fall short on appraisal. Do the math and that's just a hair over 8%, right? Or roughly one in 12. So that means if I list, not even listings, because some of these were buy sides, some of these were list sides. If I'm in an, uh, a transaction, one out of 12 will fall short on appraisal, okay? That means 11 out of 12 won't. So your odds of it falling short are pretty low. I also have a pretty good hunch of what's going to fall short. Of those 13, one was under 400 grand. And this was probably a year and a half ago when prices were much lower, right? And the there was another one that was under 500 grand. The other 11 were all 500 grand or more. So the majority of the homes in this area, I'll tell you in Port St. Lucie right now, the median sales price is right around 405, 410, right? So 
knowing that only two out of the 13 that I had fall short were under 500, that means probably 70, 80% of sales in Port St. Lucie being at 500 grand or less have a really low, low chance of seeing a short appraisal, right? So that's good news already. Of the ones that fell short, I can tell you for the market, according to that appraiser at that time, the home was overbuilt for the price in a lot of cases, right? A lot of these were new construction and they had a ton of amenities, a ton of really cool things. The buyer wanted it. Obviously, you know, the uh, uh, construction company is looking at what does it cost us to build it? They add in their, their 10 to 20% in profits and that's what they sell it for, right? If the appraiser think it's over amenitied for that area, they might appraise it for less. So that's when you're typically going to see those issues. I bring this up because I want you to know it's pretty common as a realtor to know the market and know, hey, you really aren't risking uh, a short appraisal 99% of the time. Or you know what? You've got a stunning home here that's a top 10% home uh, for the square footage in this area. There's a good chance that we're going to get a short appraisal. You should know that, right? So going in, you should know that. That's why I tell you that. Uh, so you've got four options when it falls short, whether you're the buyer or the seller, you got four options. So the first option, let's use some numbers here just so you can kind of see exactly what your options are, right? Let's say it's a $500,000 property, right? You put a, you put an offer and you get it accepted. It's $500,000. Seller's okay with 500 grand. Buyer's okay with 500 grand. Appraisal comes back and it's 470. It's $30,000 short, all right? Of that $30,000 short, you've got four options. The first option is, the seller drops the price to meet the appraisal amount, which is 470. So they drop it 30 grand. Now the buyer's happy, the lender's happy, but the seller just lost 30 grand. So that's the challenge there, but that is option number one. Option number two is the buyer can come up with the cash difference. So the funding will be based on 470, but that $30,000 difference is cash out of pocket. So let's just say you're a... 10% down conventional buyer. And let's just say your closing costs are 15 grand. Let's just say, I'm just making up numbers. So 10% down is going to be 10% of, 40, of uh, 470, which is 47,000, not of the 500 grand. So you're at 47,000. Your closing costs, we guessed, are going to be uh, 15. That brings you up to 62. And then on top of that, you're going to come up with another $30,000 to make up that difference. So you're at $92,000 in cash instead of on a $500,000 loan, you were expecting to put down 50 grand plus your 15 in closing costs. You were expecting to put down $65,000. So you're about 28, I, I can't remember exactly what the number was, but just a hair under $30,000 higher because that short appraisal came in. That is important to understand, right? But that is an option. Option number three, which is the option I see happen, well, in this case, 12 out of 13 times when mine fell short in the last three years. And that is, in this $30,000 example, the buyer and seller make up that difference with, on the sell side, they're going to drop the price. On the buy side, they're going to come up with cash. And whatever drop in price and coming up with cash add up to, it's got to add up to 30 grand. So maybe the seller drops 15 and the buyer comes up 15. Maybe the seller drops 10 and the buyer comes up 20. It really doesn't matter what those two numbers are as long as they come to an agreement, right? Now, the buyer has to have cash to be able to do that. But if they've got cash, they can do it, right? Option four, deal falls apart. And unless you wrote in something different with a common contract, they're going to get their escrow funds back. Okay, so that's the fourth option. So all of these are really important to know when you're coming into the situation. But again, I'll tell you, out of those 13 that fell short, I put 12 of them together. People wanted to negotiate. They got it done. It was challenging. It was painful. It was emotional. Sometimes it took three hours. Sometimes it took three, four, five days. But we eventually got there on 12 out of the 13. On the one that didn't get there, it was the one that was under 400 grand. I had it listed for 360. And the appraisal came in at 307. It was 53 grand short. Now we tried negotiating, it went nowhere. 
And so the deal fell apart. Put it back on the market at 360, got an offer that day for 360, and the appraisal came through at 360. Now you might say, well, how does that happen? Did the market change that much in a week? No. What happened was we got a different appraiser. And guys, people are people. They're humans. They're subjective. Now, that doesn't mean there's not a science to it, but there's also a bit of art to it, right? So you're going to see some subjectivity and objectivity intertwined to come up with your appraisal. Now, an appraiser is going to tell you it's perfect science. It's not. I appreciate the, the, the commitment to the, 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 the industry, right? And it should be. It should be as close to a science or you know an objective process as possible. But at the end of the day, we're humans. So you're going to see differences in appraisals. Now, can you challenge an appraisal? Yes, you can. It's challenging, right? Your odds of getting it successfully challenged and overturned, really low. It's a little bit of work. You're going to have to look up some comps. And you can't just present comps. That's, that's a lie. You can just present comps. But if you just present comps, your odds of getting it through are even lower. You want to present the comps and you want to show the appraiser like, do their work for them. Make it as easy as possible. If they see four comps, they're thinking, ah, oh, now I got to go do all this work again. This sucks. But if you present the comps and you say, this is a three-stall garage, this is a two-stall garage, so we're going to take out 4500 for that. This one has carpet, but this one has, you know, tile, so we're going to add 6500 for that. And you go through and do all that for them. They might not agree with your numbers, but at least they can see the differences. They can see your estimates and you made their job a little bit easier, right? So there's really a lot that goes into this from a sales standpoint with a realtor, right? You want to make it as easy and welcoming as possible for that appraiser. But I will tell you, the odds of getting it overturned are very challenging, okay? Now, if you've got a government loan involved, let's say it's FHA or VA, and that appraisal gets done, let's say it does not get overturned. If you get another government buyer, that appraisal does not go away for six months. So if you got your home, let's say we got an FHA buyer, they come in on that $500,000 home with 500 grand, it appraises at 470 and the deal falls apart. You put the home back on the market and now you get another FHA buyer, you already know if it's within six months, there are no new appraisals. It's 470. So either that person has to understand that and agree to come up with the $30,000 difference or you got to negotiate the difference. Or you've got to go out and look for some conventional or cash buyers. That's important to know as a realtor and as a seller, right? You don't want to attract people, get them into a contract and then find out, man, we're in the same exact situation. So guys, there you go. There is a quick view on short appraisals, all of your different options, kind of an outlook on how the process works. And I'll tell you this, it is challenging. It's one of the, the higher level things you're going to see in real estate, one of the biggest challenges. And you're going to see a lot of people for sale by owners have no idea what to do. They're either going to give up all their money in most scenarios or they're going to lose the deal, right? They don't understand how to negotiate the middle ground. Uh, you're going to see it with newer agents. If you're a newer agent, if you're a for sale by owner and you get yourself into this bind, call me. I'm more than happy to walk you through and help you through the process. I want to see you successfully close on these properties. Guys, have a phenomenal Friday and an even better weekend. Take care. I appreciate